I'm gonna be ready. I wanna be ready. I wanna be ready, Lord, to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I'm gonna be ready. I wanna be ready. I wanna be ready, Lord, to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, John, oh, John, now what do you say? Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I'll meet you there on the crown and there. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I'm gonna be ready. I wanna be ready. Empty Cross Ministries Biblical Focal Points Tuesday Morning Devotional. I'm Dr. David, and we're going to be talking about uh, being delivered from whoops, being delivered from evil this morning. Uh, let me look at something here. Okay, yeah, we're going to be next few days. We're going to be talking about the model prayer, which is the Lord's Prayer, and some of us may be calling it the Our Father. And we're going to open up with that prayer here in a few moments. Um, let's go ahead and open up with uh, the Lord's Prayer. So if you would pray with me as He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, since I get it pulled up here, we're going to get right to it. And we're going to go to the last petition in the Lord's Prayer. The last petition in the model prayer looks to the future when we pray. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We see that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. That is a prayer that every believer should pray daily because we are all vulnerable to succumb to temptation. One wag said truthfully, if a man wakes up and finds his house on fire, he does not sit in a chair and write or read a treatise on the origin of fires in a private house. He sets to try to extinguish the fire and save his house. 
Where is the fire in your house? Where is the fire in your house? Each one of us has a different spot of vulnerability. What is a brutal temptation for one person may leave another one unmoved. And vice versa. Every excuse me, excuse me. Every person has a weak spot which if he is not careful can ruin his life. Do not lead us into temptation. The word the word for temptation has the basic meaning of to test. When it is used of Satan testing us, it is with the view of causing us to fail the test. And are we honest enough? Are we honest enough with God to ask Him to keep us out of circumstances and tempting situations because we know from experience our faith, our faith could not endure them? Do we play with temptations instead of praying that God will keep us away from them? The Bible tells us that God tempts no one. Look at James uh, chapter 1 verse 13. But we have an old nature that is always capable of sinning. And it is at war against the Holy Spirit. Look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. That explains that both the Holy Spirit and the flesh are in constant, active, unceasing conflict. For the flesh sets its desire against excuse me, for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. The word deliver, ruami, means to rescue, save, deliver, or preserve someone or something. When the believer is walking in dependence upon the Spirit, he is delivered from the lust of the flesh. Whatever is undertaken in the energy of the flesh will fail because it is not in the power of God. The only way we can possibly be delivered over our old nature is by the Spirit working in us. Look at Romans chapter 6 uh, verse 14 and Romans chapter 8 verse 2. The most spiritual Christians are warned to pray daily and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil or deliver us from the evil one. If we do not, we are courting failure in living the Christian life. It is our responsibility to walk in the Spirit, reckon on the indwelling power of Christ living in us, putting off the old man, mortifying the flesh, and abiding in Christ. The deliverance from the power of sin is through Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 7 verse 25 and Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 10. Those things, those scriptures teach us that the believer's fallen nature has been judged by co-crucifixion, co-death, and co-burial with Christ. Therefore, making it possible for the indwelling Holy Spirit to answer this petition of the believer. Evil can be translated the evil one, meaning the devil, or it can mean evil in the ethical sense. Here it is probably the evil element in life. The Holy Spirit delivers us from the power of sin in our daily life. We have been delivered from the penalty of sin by the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The moment we put our faith in Christ as our Savior, we were forgiven of our sins and the assurance that our debt has been paid in full. This prayer deals with the power of sin 
in our daily life. From the human side, it depends upon our attitude of faith in the death of Christ and the action of faith taking God at his word and depending on the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to overcome temptation. There will never be there will never be a time in the Christian's life when he will not need to depend on the Holy Spirit. The just one shall live by faith, faith which depends on the power of the indwelling Spirit. This is what it means to abide in the Spirit or abide in Christ. The doxology, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's the, the second part of verse 13. Was added in later manuscripts as a fitting liturgical closing to the prayer. All power, honor, and glory belong to the Lord God. Our greatest defense against falling into sin is the presence of Jesus Christ living in us and our dependence upon him. What would you do if you suddenly found Christ standing beside you? Is a good question to ask ourselves often. How would you then live? It is, it is his inescapable presence that keeps us from yielding to temptation. This concludes our Tuesday morning devotional, and we're going to close out here uh, once again with the Lord's Prayer. And we will be talking about the Lord's Prayer more in the next couple of days. So if you would, once again, pray with me as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the word, and write the word upon your heart. Until next time.